Here it is, the Sony PSP handheld game system, the PlayStation Portable, bringing the PlayStation with you wherever you go. Except it's really not that portable because the screen is easy to scratch, there's nothing that covers it. One of many problems that this game system has. But let me start by saying this is the Sega Game Gear or Atari Lynx of handheld game consoles for the mid to late 2000s. This is the premier handheld game system. I love looking at the box on these things. Let's check out the marketing. We've got a bunch of happy people on the front and they're watching movies and listening to music because you can do that on your PSP. You can also do that on your cell phone. So really, what's the advantage of the PSP? Well, the awesome video games. This is the model 3001, which is the later model of the PSP released in 2008. The original PSP was released in 2004. So they, they did a lot of improvements with this version. It's smaller and lighter and has an analog thumbstick there, which is great. This is very well designed. Let's take a look at that. You see my fingerprints all over this thing, but it's got a nice textured surface to it. And actually, moves around very smoothly. It's not as good as the analog thumbsticks on the PlayStation 2 or PlayStation 3 controllers, but it's still very nice, very well made, and we have all the buttons that are required to play video games on there. Excellent PlayStation-style buttons. I mean, Sony really knows how to make buttons, so you gotta give them credit for that. Open me first. That's very demanding. Nice packaging with this thing. I'm recording this on the eve of the release of the PSP Go, the replacement model of PSP, the new model. They're claiming it's not a replacement, that this is not obsolete, but uh, they're basically replacing it. What they've done is they're removing that UMD drive, which I think is uh, something they should have done in the first place. I like the build quality of the PSP. It looks great in this photograph. It looks great sitting there. It looks great in real life. It's extremely sturdy. It feels expensive. It feels like a solid piece of video game hardware, but it has one major major problem that's haunted it from the beginning and will continue to haunt it forever. Well, maybe not forever, that's being a bit melodramatic, but there is one big problem with this thing. This is the problem with the PSP because Sony owns the UMD format, it's like Betamax. I mean, it's one of their formats, like Blu-ray, but Blu-ray actually gives you something good, <laughs> more quality. Blu-ray is a great format. This, on the other hand, is ridiculous. So you'd buy your movie once on DVD to watch it on television, and you'd buy it again to watch it on your PSP. Why would you do that when you could just copy your DVD to your laptop or your iPod? It, it just made no sense, and it increases manufacturing cost. Look at that. They have to build all of that just to play the UMD, which has all the problems associated with optical media on the go. It skips. It, which means your game freezes, or it doesn't load. It, it's just completely problematic and unnecessary. It raised the price of this thing, which made this hard to compete with a Nintendo DS. And it's, that's really the problem with the PSP, is the UMD. The internet browser in here is a, is a piece of junk. It's completely worthless. It didn't need to be. They could have made an excellent internet browser. And the PlayStation Store now is awesome. That works really well. We'll go into that. You can see up top it has a WLAN switch. All right, let's sign into the PlayStation Store. What? <laughs> you yeah, know, this is so typical. Let's try this again. There we go. The PlayStation Store. Which actually works quite well these days. I applaud their decision to move away from UMDs with the new PSP Go and go straight download. That's the way they should have done it in the first place. They should have seen this coming miles away. It's, this is Sony. They're supposed to be smart. Here's an error message that many PSP owners should be familiar with. The disc could not be read. I just played this game a couple hours ago. It's practically brand new and it can't be read all of a sudden. Are you kidding me? Let's go back and try to figure out what's wrong with this thing. Uh, we'll turn it off. We'll take the UMD out of the slot. All right, let's shake it because as those of us who grew up with cartridges know, shaking things and blowing on them always helps. 
All right. Let's try this again. Make sure it's clumsily sitting in there. Shut it. And turn the PSP back on. All right. Let's go for this one. Uh, hoping it works. Okay, so there's a saved data utility folder and we can poke around and see everything else on here. Okay. Hey, there it is. It's back. Let's try playing it this time. Anyway, let's move on to the positive things about the PSP. Number one, it is like having a PlayStation 2 with you everywhere you go with the PlayStation 3 menus, which are really nice. The Model 3000 one that I'm holding has an incredible video out and audio out. So you can play this on a television, which is, of course, very nice to have. Sound quality from the PSP is excellent, not from the built-in speakers, but from the games themselves. If you're listening to them on headphones or playing them through a stereo system, one thing the PSP does really well. Excellent graphics, excellent sound quality. Let's take a look at some of the games for this thing. Sony PSP owners have a wealth of awesome games to choose from. God of War, Killzone, R-Type Command, Soul Calibur, Broken Destiny. They're terrific video games. From the design standpoint, I really like the PSP. I think it's a very well-styled handheld game console. It's a little bit large, but on the other hand, that makes it easy to play and grip all of the buttons for more complex PlayStation 2 style action games rather than just puzzle games and strategy games, which is what you'll find a lot of on the DS. They work really well on the DS. This thing, on the other hand, is great for big, like big budget action titles like God of War and Soul Calibur. Work really well on here because, it, frankly, this is just a very powerful game console. The button layout is fantastic. Sometimes these top two buttons get a little clunky if you're trying to do everything all at once, but all right, let's open this thing up and actually insert to UMD. Let's look at the strength of the PSP, which is graphics, gameplay, quality of games. That it does well, and that's why you would buy one of these things. Not to watch UMD movies. I like when you insert a disc, and this is Soul Calibur Broken Destiny. Pops up on screen like that. In fact, I can adjust the color of the camera here. When you want to start a game, you just select it, and it opens up like that. For all of the PSP reviews here on Classic Game Room, I record them with the video and audio output straight into my editing equipment. But you can see here, just looking at this, filmed with the HD camera, how nice the visuals on the PSP are. Yes, Soul Calibur, Broken Destiny. Excellent game. There's the camera again. All right, let's hit the start button, which is down here. Kratos, we'll go with him. All right. We'll go with that outfit. I didn't use that in my Soul Calibur review. There we go. And when you want to get out of the game, you just hit this little button here. It brings you to that menu and you hit yes, it goes right back. Well, I applaud most of the changes that they're making with the PSP Go. I think they're things that should have been done the first time around. All downloadable games. That's really the key. The PlayStation Store now has done pretty well. As you can see, this is very well organized. You can download lots of classic PS1 games. The new games that will play on the PSP Go will also play on the PSP No. I guess that's what they would call this thing now. Um, so, you know, do you need to run out and buy a new one? I don't know. I guess that's really up to you. I, maybe? Maybe not. Per I'm perfectly happy with this thing and my Vectrex controller, which has nothing to do with this, but it's just hanging out in the background. Um, hmm. Well, that's a shame. You know the Vectrex controller is actually larger than the PSP? Just in case you were wondering. 